Hello, and welcome to Humanities Matter, brought to you by Brill. I am Emily Tampkin, and this week we will be looking at key issues in the field of humanities. I'm speaking today with Giles Scott Smith, a professor of diplomatic history at Leiden. Giles Scott Smith is one of the co-editors of a brand new journal on diplomacy, Diplomatica. Uh, Dr. Scott Smith, how are you today? Uh, very well, thank you. Good to, good to hear you loud and clear. Good to hear you too. Um, so, so to start out, you know, you have this new journal on diplomacy, on diplomatic history. Um, it, it's coming out at a time that, you know, we have leaders who, uh, like, like here in the United States, Donald Trump, like in the United Kingdom, now Boris Johnson, um, who are sort of hailed for being undiplomatic, right? Who, who are praised for telling it like it is and not putting it diplomatically. How do you see diplomacy as being impacted by the rise of populism or, or uh, sort of undiplomatic, quote unquote, undiplomatic leaders in the Western world? Yeah, I mean, that is a, a, very, a very important question, I think. Uh, certainly the pressures on diplomacy and diplomats have increased in, in recent years, uh, precisely because of the, the reasons that you mentioned, that we're now in an era where we have uh, leaders in power who are looking for you know, sometimes the quick fix. Uh, the, they're always looking for the powerful soundbite. They are, in some cases, looking to directly engage with um, other leaders or peoples uh, through their own social media. And this, in, in many ways, is... is increasing the yeah the pressure on on traditional diplomacy and also in some ways and one might say uh, reducing its space for operation i mean if if uh, the leaders of today are occupying such a dominant place in international politics what possibly can can diplomats do um and i think it's it's important to to balance that uh, that image with the sense that um one might say leaders come and go but diplomacy is always there and we are talking about an institution that is um, uh, highly attuned to maintaining daily relations um, between nation states. Uh, the people who occupy those positions uh, in embassies and ministries uh, and departments across the world um, have a tremendous amount of experience in doing so. And they're also used to doing a lot of what they do behind the scenes. So that we, we have become accustomed to, to leaders being very vocal, very visible, uh, and and expressing themselves uh, sometimes you know with with no limits, uh, as if that is what diplomacy has become. And of course, it, it hasn't. That the 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 the, the traditional you know, diplomatic networks are still functioning. They they're changing, obviously, but they're still functioning, and they're still maintaining those relations um, as they have done for for a long, long time. So we've been speaking about social media, diplomacy, um, populist leaders. One side effect of all of this, of, of the rise of uh, leaders who, who people see as speaking more freely, uh, is that people themselves have sort of uh, felt comfortable speaking more freely. One side effect of which has been the rise of uh, xenophobia expressed on social media. I mean, that's not the only reason that it's there surely, and this is not a podcast on technology, but I did want to ask if you see diplomacy as having a role in, um, how to say, countering uh, the rise of, of quite open, hateful speech, not just in the political class, but, but on social media and amidst the public. Is, can diplomacy kind of beat back that, that tide? Yeah, that, that's very interesting. I mean, I think if, we, if we're talking about um, diplomacy as a profession, as, as a body of diplomats who, who have the, the role of conducting diplomacy and, and maintaining these relations, I think, yes, of course, they, they, they do have a role. Um, I think uh, at the same time, they need to stay apart from the... Uh, a lot of the craziness that takes place on social media. And, and I think this, it's important to reflect on how it's important for diplomats and um, ministries and departments around the world to be able to maintain control of what diplomacy is supposed to do. Um, because I think we are in an era with social media and with, uh, and with leaders, as we said, who 
uh, are quite adept at um, communicating their views immediately, uh, regardless of what their, their closest advisors may think, that it can seem as if diplomacy is just spiraling out of control. And that is not the case. That is purely um, what may happen occasionally in, on social media, but that's not happening in the, uh, you know, the, the contacts that are happening in the diplomatic world on a daily basis. So I, I think it's, it's important for um, diplomats, for, for ministries to be able to um, say, look, uh, social media will never go away. We even participate in it. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty of, of negotiating a, the national interest in an international setting, we are the ones who, who can do that and no one else. And I, and I think that, uh, that, that is really the challenge for, for as the 21st century uh, progresses, I think. And, and social media is posing that challenge. Well said. Um, Giles Scott Smith, thank you so much for speaking with me today about your new journal, Diplomatica. Thank you very much. Real pleasure.